Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do. Lots and lots of news broke over the weekend. We're going to dig into all of it. We've got three different guests on to talk about different aspects of the Amy Coney Barrett Supreme Court nomination and confirmation fight. We've got Zed Jelani on. We've got Matt Stoller on. We also have Michael Lind on, so perspectives all around. Um, but we wanted to start with the big New York Times bombshell. They finally got their hands on over two decades of Trump's tax returns and are starting to dig into exactly what they reveal. Yes, yeah, so let's throw that up there on the show. There it is. The long concealed record show Trump's chronic losses and years of tax avoidance is all over cable news. I'm sure you haven't been able to miss it. Donald Trump, according to the New York Times, paid $750 in federal income taxes the year he won the presidency. And in the first year in his White House, he paid another $750. He paid, quote, no income taxes at all in the 10 of the previous 15 years, largely because he reported losing much more money than he made. So a lot is being made of this crystal. Um, my general take is, and I, I assume yours is probably the same thing, is yes, he's a rich person who doesn't pay his taxes. So he's an average rich person in this country. I mean, I'm not saying it isn't scandalous. I it's think it's just, gross it's, and, it's, and it's a bad system. Yeah. But this is, especially as we were just talking about before the show, if you're a real estate developer, this is usually what it's like. I'm not excusing it. I think it's gross. I think you should pay millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes. But if you think this is bad, then I invite you to look at the taxes of everybody else who is in the Fortune 500. The tax tax system yeah. in this country is absolutely abhorrently disgusting, mm -hmm. and that is in part what is revealed by these returns. There's no allegation here of illegality, although there is an ongoing dispute between the president and the IRS about this big loss that right. he's tried to claim to eliminate his um, tax liability over the years. Part of what makes it extra disgusting, though, is the fact that as part of that big corporate tax cut that Trump pushed through mm. during office, it would make the tax treatment for real estate developers even more favorable. <laughs> So this is a guy who hasn't paid taxes for, what, 10 of the last 15, the years. Last 15 years. While he's been in the White House, the returns they got their hands on, he paid $750 in taxes, which is disgusting. He actually paid more overseas yeah, right. than he paid here in the U.S. In, in the, the taxes. Philippines. And, but apparently that wasn't good enough. He had to go ahead and pass a, ta a tax law to additionally benefit real estate developers while he's in office. So that is kind of disgusting. The other piece of this, and you're right, that's mm. the piece that cable news in particular is fixated on because right. it's the easiest to kind of wrap your head around. He only paid $750 in taxes. He also owes a lot of money that's kind of coming due. Look, I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anyone right. that number one, rich people don't pay a lot of taxes. Number two, Donald Trump doesn't pay a lot of taxes. And number three, that his whole financial empire is a bit of a precarious house of cards. I could have told you all of that before he was president. <laughs> right. I don't think any of that's going to be that surprising. Maybe to me, the most disgusting, also not surprising, yeah. but disgusting and disturbing part that we shouldn't let ourselves become sort of immune to is the amount of financial entanglements overseas, the amount of money that he's made through the presidency and the way that that can, I mean, that's, that's corruption. Look, it might not yeah, be illegal, it but it is, and it might be illegal through the emoluments clause, but it is corruption that can affect your decision-making. How does that impact your relationship with the Saudis? How does that affect your relationship with the Turks? We've called out Joe Biden here and Hunter mm -hmm. for his, you know, gross dealings overseas, which again, not illegal, but these are exactly the sorts of things that just absolutely degrade public trust in any of our well, elections. this is the one thing the Trump people never want to talk about. Look, it's obviously corrupt. It's corruption. It's so whenever you're receiving foreign money, you know, abroad and you're president of the United States, yeah, it's bad. And like, look, you know, you can say blind trust, whatever. I've heard oh, about please. a lot of blind trust in my years here yeah. in D.C. Okay. And I've read about blind trust um, over the many years for presidents. And it almost is always B.S. And that's the truth. Yeah. He sold everything he had whenever he became president. If, that, if you really want to be president, that's what you should have done. I said it at the time. I still continue to believe yeah. it. And, yeah, I mean, it does not – it's not a good look. And it just sets – it's not – I mean – the precedent's already basically been set, but it just continues to like normalize this behavior. I do think that one, the one funny part, Crystal, within these tax returns is it disproves a central thesis of the entire Russia Gate scandal, which was once we get our hands on these tax returns, we're going to know whether Donald Trump is paid, bought and paid for by Russia. Mm -hmm. Now, I ask you all to believe that if that was true, that the New York Times would probably say it was true. Um, we don't have access to the documents. They're not going to publish them because they say it's something about protecting their sources. Um, but let's throw Matt Taibbi's tweet up there on the screen, right? So buried within the story, 
was a little noted paragraph, nor do the tax records reveal any previously unreported connections to Russia. So there it is, Crystal. After so many years, after he won't release it, maybe he didn't want to release his tax returns because it showed that most of his business empire is basically a fraud. Right. I mean, that's, that's more likely. Yeah. It is. It's such a Trump era story it really is. because the fact that he didn't want to disclose his tax returns as like every other presidential nominee has done, major party nominee has done for decades now, it fed into this suspicion that there was something absolutely devastating yeah. there. And look, like the stuff in here is not great. It doesn't look good for him as like a businessman, certainly paying so little in tax, paying no taxes, and then going ahead and giving yourself another tax cut as part. Like all that stuff is disgusting. The financial entanglements overseas. The other thing that we didn't mention is it looks like he paid his kids and Ivanka in particular yeah, consult. consulting fees that then he got to write off, which is just like a <laughs> way of passing into income to them basically tax free. There's a lot of gross stuff here. But don't forget the way that it was built up was like, if we see these returns, his presidency is over, yes. he's finished, politically dead. I mean, I think we probably both would agree that in part, because of the way that these things were built up by the media, the fact that they're normal bad instead of like earth shattering catastrophic bad means that it will have a lot less political impact than if they hadn't built up expectations so high. So obviously one of the areas where the expectations were built to the moon was on Russia. And Matt points it out. There is one line in the story that's like, by the way, no Russian, no Russian yeah. entanglements that we hadn't seen before. <laughs> There's another line that, that some have seized on. I saw John Harwood on CNN last night trying to make something of this, that the Miss Universe pageant in Moscow was particularly profitable. God. So they're like, we've got a lot of questions about that. And it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> Just friggin' let it go. Just let it go, please. <laughs> but David K. Johnston, um, so he's one, he's the this, you know, tax expert, uh, I think he was formerly with the New York Times, like really been on the Donald Trump tax beat. Let me show you what he used to say about how he expected if we got the tax returns, we would learn about all the Russian entanglements. And then I'll play for you what he's saying. Now, let's listen to A1F, what David K. Johnston had to say in the past. Now he's got a New York State Attorney General, Letitia James, who ran for office saying, I'm going to dig into Donald Trump, and she has the legal tools to do so. Uh, we've got the Southern District of New York, which is very experienced in these, and we've got a host of committees in the House. We're going to see Donald Trump's tax returns. We're going to see how much money he got from Russian oligarchs. And the Deutsche Bank matter is particularly important. So there he is saying, okay. look, we get, we're going to get the tax returns and we're going to learn it all. We're going to know about the Russian entanglements. Now that the tax returns are out and we don't learn about any Russian entanglements, here's how he's explaining that yesterday. Well, this is a stunningly detailed report that goes into essentially everything you would know from the tax returns that isn't what you'd know about his business. For example, there's nothing in here about Russia and whether the money he's gotten, we know he's gotten from Russia, because that would be business records, not tax records. Oh, funny he didn't <laughs> make that ends. distinction before. And look, tax returns are not a complete picture of a person's no. wealth or financial entanglements or transactions or any of that. So look, it's possible there are Russian entanglements that aren't reflected in the tax returns, but that is not the way that this was sold in advance. In advance, what we were told time and time again was number one, if the tax returns ever came out, it would be over for Donald Trump. And number two, that we would learn the extent of his Russian entanglements. And that piece, look, there's a lot of of gross and corrupt behavior reflected in these terms. I don't want to downplay that, but the piece about Russia is obviously like not there whatsoever. If it was, the New York Times certainly would have led yeah, with exactly. that 100%. And it's just, there's no acknowledgement of one <laughs> sentence. I mean, it should actually, it's a it's bombshell funny. story in my opinion. That's true. It's like a central part of the national character, which was inflicted upon us yeah. over the last four years, True. is bullshit. And like nobody seems to acknowledge it. And and just put it in like a little asterisk. Yeah. By the way, we're exactly. wrong about everything. And like I said, look, I mean, yes, I think it's corrupt. I think it's gross. And I think that the way that he's comported himself and his business dealings, I also don't think anybody voted for him. Nobody voted for him was like, you know what? That guy paid his That's tax. a stand-up yeah, guy. That, that guy, he paid, guy every, he paid every penny and more that he owes. He dotted his I's and he crossed his T's and he's, you know, <laughs> 
just the most moral person alive. No, that's not what happened here. I'm not excusing it. What I am saying is that amongst the uber rich class, this is the norm. And we should understand that. It's and we should actually, if we really care about doing anything about this, then we can't just look at it as like, because that's what everybody's like, oh, Trump. Let's go take a look at what Bezos pays mm. and what all these other people pay. It's nothing. They do the exact same thing. They write off, they buy companies, they transfer wealth amongst their families. So much more disgusting behavior. So look, if you really care, I invite you to really do something about it. It is yeah. absurdly grotesque. Yeah. And not only, I mean, with Trump, it's extra because since he's been in the presidency, he's gone out of his way to make his tax situation even more mm -hmm. favorable, which is disgusting. Um, but all of these rich people like lobby for their own personal loopholes yeah. to get out of paying taxes and shift money around and store it overseas. And I mean, they engage tax lawyers, spend a lot of money to make sure that they don't have to pay the taxes that regular income earners have to pay. It truly is grotesque. I mean, one of the hypocritical features that I saw here is, of course, all the never Trump, like the Lincoln Project mm -hmm. people are out, like, you know, railing, oh, Donald Trump only paid $750 in taxes. You people don't believe in a progressive yeah. income tax. Like, you know. Created the system which allowed him to do that. That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> so it's disgusting. The one thing I will say on the political front is we covered here how Joe Biden has adopted, sh sort of shifted in recent weeks to this framing of Park Avenue versus Scranton. Yeah. This does kind of feed into that narrative. I think that it'll be interesting to see, obviously, the debates tomorrow night. Of course, Wallace, I'm sure there will be questions about some of this stuff. It's mm -hmm. a big enough bombshell that it'll make it into the debate. I don't expect, because I think the Biden team is kind of smart for them to really go in super deep in the details on this. I think they have some other, you know, coronavirus is a more, is more favorable terrain. I think it's more politically potent. But, um, but like I said, to the extent it matters politically, it kind of feeds into this Park Avenue versus Scranton thing. So it's slightly bolstering there. But do I think that it's really going to upend the dynamics of the race? No, I do no, not. Certainly not. All right, we're going to tell you it's on our radar. So that's next.